W.B. Du Bois was an African-American civil rights activist, an educator, a historian, and a sociologist. Throughout all his life, his scholarship was inseparable from protest. He was among the founders of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and for 25 years, he was their director of public policy and research. In 1900, he went to the World Exposition with the goal of refuting myths of racial inferiority. To do that, he took data and statistics and depicted them in beautiful illustrations to show, quote, the present conditions of African-Americans. So for Black History Month, we want to take those illustrations and update them to see how much has changed. This first image is one of the most iconic ones that Du Bois created. It simply charts the history of the US population and breaks it down by different racial categories. So right now I'm just marking down every single decade because the chart goes from 1790 all the way down to 2010. Okay, so now I've drawn the total population, so I want to be able to mark out the different racial categories that we're looking at here. And just as he did, he started off by showing the white population on the right-hand side moved between different races and ended up with the black population on the left-hand side, so I'll be repeating that also. I'm taking the share of the white population to around about where it is right now, today, which is 72%. So the black population today makes up about 13% of the US population. From his perspective, these changes between 1800 and 1890 look vast, but once you extend another 110 years onto US history, they look relatively small. I think one of the things that's really interesting is that the original title of Du Bois's chart was, it had the word amalgamation in it. And I think he foresaw that the, the category in between white and black mixed race people would be far, far larger than it currently is. I've been researching a lot lately about um, the way that the Trump administration might suppress data collection, particularly data that isn't necessarily of interest to them. And right now there's a Republican bill in Congress that's seeking to stop the use of federal money um, to measure racial segregation. If that bill's passed, it's going to be really, really difficult to prove discrimination if we have no data there to show it. In his chart, the category between white and black is relatively large, and today it's not that much larger than it was back then. So I think this chart is pretty much done. I've depicted US population growth from 1790 to 2016, and I've used the boys as my inspiration. So his chart stopped around about here, 1890, which is why it looks kind of different to mine. Um, I think if Du Bois was to look at the modern chart today, he might be kind of surprised because actually it doesn't look that different to his. Given basic demographics, you would expect there to be more mixed race people in America, but because of historical and sociological factors, that still isn't the case. The nation is still largely divided between white and black people, but now with a growing share of Hispanics too. The next chart I'm going to be showing depicts illiteracy of African Americans. Now, when Du Bois started, he plotted the date 1860, and in that year, black illiteracy was over 99%. By the time he finished, it was at 50%. Where's it at today? So, each little mark on the ruler represents 10% of illiteracy. So hopefully you want to see the number move from left to right as illiteracy declines in the US. The first statistic that I'm drawing on here is for the year 1860, when illiteracy rates were at 99%. So I went to the National Centre for Education Statistics to find 2017 data on black illiteracy rates. And they actually disagree with some of these historic statistics depicted by Du Bois, but I've still stayed true to the ones that Du Bois depicted for my data here. In 1890, there's a, a pretty significant jump, actually. Illiteracy rates dropped to 67%. And in 2010, black illiteracy rates were about 2%. And so it looks like a story of enormous progress, but actually, in some ways it's not, because black illiteracy rates still are higher than white illiteracy rates, which shows that the educational system continues to fail black Americans. He chose illiteracy because it was a huge problem, and because he himself, education was hugely important to him. He was the first African American to get a PhD in history from Harvard University, and without his education, he wouldn't have been able to do the things that he did. So I'm sure literacy was a subject very, very close to his heart. 
if I could make Du Bois today, I would want to ask him how he expected these charts to look today. Um, and I'd also really want to ask him how he collected his data in a time when there wasn't the internet. Each one of these horizontal bars shows the percentage of African Americans that are illiterate in any given year. And all the vertical bars do is help someone to understand what that exact percentage number is. The data is actually being depicted in the horizontal bars. And I think the goal of, of, of this particular chart isn't just to say um, black literacy rates are still high, it's to show that historical context, to say African Americans, a lot of African Americans can't read and that's not because they're stupid or intellectually inferior, that's because they've been withheld from education for so long. So this is the final version of the chart that I created. I've added data for 2010 right down at the bottom showing that illiteracy rates are currently at about 2% for black Americans. This next chart is about household wealth. Now, Du Bois looked at the way that household wealth in Georgia had accumulated over time for African Americans. Instead, I want to look at nationwide statistics and I want to compare them between different racial groups. I am drawing a, a circle to depict household wealth of white Americans. Um, the number of degrees equals the number of dollars. So the net worth, the median net worth of a white American today is about $110,000. And as you can imagine, white people in America have the highest net worth of any racial group. Du Bois plotted out the household wealth of African Americans in Georgia from 1875 to 1899. And for each year that he looked at, that household wealth increased. Now, I think if I was to plot that today, that might be a bit misleading because you would be able to see that African-Americans have a net worth that is far, far higher than it was, but that isn't necessarily a sign of progress because racial disparities in net wealth are still absolutely vast. This isn't supposed to depict how hard these different racial groups work. It's supposed to depict how hard they have to work. So this is the white American net worth I've now plotted down. Not as neat as Du Bois, but we can't all be that good. This other racial, uh, this category of race, which can be described as other, has a median net worth, which is significantly lower than white or Asian people in the US. I'm just shading in now the part of the chart that depicts African-Americans who have a median net worth of about $7,000, which is way, way, way far behind the median net assets of white Americans, which are about $110,000. So this one's pretty much done now. The red on this chart depicts the net assets of white Americans. The gray are Asian Americans. Then you have all other races, followed by Hispanics up here. And last on the list come black Americans. They have the lowest net assets of any racial group in America. This next one is about um, the jobs that people do. The first category that I'm drawing on here is other, because actually the workforce is so split up now that, yeah, a lot of groups are kind of like um, hard to categorize. I think, again, like with these, there are some small percentage differences between the two groups, but I think they're gonna be really, really difficult for the eye to see, because what you'll basically see by glancing at the chart is that the occupational categories that different races in America work in, that black Americans versus white Americans work in, aren't so different. What there is a huge difference in is promotions, pay. Black Americans are almost twice as likely to work in a job category known as social services as white Americans. So I, because he used five colours in his, I also wanted to use five colours, so I grouped this huge list of different occupational categories provided by the Bureau of Labour Statistics into five groups. In Du Bois's time, the largest category by far was agriculture, farming and, and mining. You know, maybe, maybe these colours used to have different connotations, like maybe everyone used to associate red with mining and fishing and agriculture, and they used to associate yellow with domestic service, I don't know. I'm 
doing a grey next, a similar grey actually to the one that I used before so I can just match up the two colours. So this chart is one of the ones actually that does show a real change but it's kind of hard to make sense necessarily of what it means. So whereas um, there was a big difference in uh, professional occupations between blacks and whites when Du Bois did this, uh, black Americans overwhelmingly worked in uh, agriculture, mining and fisheries or else uh, in domestic work. So I grouped together very different categories and the very different categories look like overwhelmingly blacks and whites in America work in the similar occupations. This red category here is other, yellow is management and business, blue is education and healthcare, sales and administration over here and then services. W.E.B. Du Bois made his charts 117 years ago. If he would have updated them today like I did, I wonder if he would have been surprised. Because life for some African Americans has improved, but the racial disparities that exist in this country remain vast and clearly visible. I'm Mona Chalabi, I'm the data editor at The Guardian US. Thank you for watching.